Welcome, guys, to uh, Pivotal Pivots, using multiple pivot points for market timing opportunities. I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon. I've got about a 45-minute presentation to show you on, uh, on a free market indicator called Pivot Points and how I use them to find market timing opportunities. To me, a market timing opportunity is uh, something that shows me where to buy and something and shows me where to sell. So let's start. I've been trading for 20 years now. I started in uh, exactly 1996. This is my 20th year. Uh, at a time when uh, whatever you bought, you couldn't go wrong. Apple, not Apple, AOL every day was up five, ten dollars um, Broadcom every day was up five, ten dollars um, It was just a crazy time of the year, and you just you just couldn't uh, you couldn't lose back in the uh, the mid 90s the late 90s and that's when I started trading um, back then um, I didn't really day trade I bought and I held and uh, just kind of watched my stocks go up and up and up I survived the uh, the crash of 2000 2001 and uh, I also survived the crash of 2008 uh, when I first started trading I didn't know anything about technical analysis um, I didn't know anything about a clown's shoulder or a head and shoulder or or uh, or anything like that. But I learned over the years. But I needed to find an edge to help me determine where to buy and where to sell. After those two market crashes, I decided, you know, I really need to start selling. You, you know, buying and holding just isn't working because those market crashes just keep wiping out everything you've made over the last three, four, five years. So I needed to find a way to show me where to buy and where to sell. I tried using many different types of indicators, including moving averages and RSIs, MACDs, Bollinger Bands, Scatastics. You know what I'm talking about. All of those lagging movicators. They seem to get me in and out too late. And what I didn't like about moving averages is price didn't seem to respect the moving average very well. I put a stop in on the 50, price would come through the 50-day moving average, stop me out, then bounce back up and take off without me. I hated that. So I needed to find something better. So I tried drawing trend lines on my charts to see if that would show me some better buying and selling opportunities. And it did. It worked a little bit better for, for my shorter term trades. But then I would spend hours and hours drawing lines and trying to find a where to buy and sell and it got to be ridiculous after a while. So I sat back and I said, you know, trading is supposed to be simple. We're just supposed to buy dips. But where are the good buys and when do we say goodbye to our position? So here's a cool chart showing the buys, the good buys, and when price turns, how it's a good buy to get out of it. So what I started doing is using a monthly line chart which is the, uh, the, uh, the orange line is priced using a nine moving average, a nine SMA, that's the white line. And as long as price was above the white line, told me it was safe to buy the dips, buy the dips, buy the dips. When price broke below the white line, it told me to get out. Here's IBB. Uh, told you to get out last year when it broke through uh, 324. Here's Apple last year. This is a, uh, instead of a line chart, this is a candlestick chart. This is a monthly candlestick using a 9 SMA moving average. And when price broke through uh, uh, 122 here, that was the clue for long-term investors, active investors, trading to get out. So what have I learned about the stock market in my 20 years as a trader? The first thing I've learned is trading is a visual game. I don't buy what I think I should buy. I don't buy what I think is going to go up. I only buy what I see. I buy at support and I sell at resistance. So I have to determine on my charts where is support and where is resistance. I've also learned that fundamental analysis doesn't show me where to buy. Just because a stock has a low PE doesn't mean it's a good buy. Look at Apple. Apple's got a low PE. PEs are a way lagging indicator. PEs are a bunch of BS in my opinion. It's just something that Wall Street created to make you feel like you're getting a good deal. But it really doesn't mean 
gain anything because if, if it did, Apple wouldn't have fallen 35% from its 12 PE when it was at 133. I've also learned in my 20 years, you only get one or two chances a year to buy stocks on sale. And if you're a long-term investor trading your IRA account, this is key. You want to be able to know when to buy stocks and where to buy these good stocks when they become on sale. I've also learned that every trader likes to trade on a different time frame. Some like daily trades, some like weekly swing trades, some like monthly trades. Every trader needs and his own comfort level. So what I'm trying to say here is following another trader's trade might work for that trader, but it might not work for your personality and your time frame. So you need to find your own comfort level of trading. And that just takes time. That just takes experience. There's no way you know anybody can teach that to a trader. Uh, I've also learned that stock and commodity prices move from pivot point to pivot point. And I'll show you some examples of that coming up very shortly. And I've also learned when trading options, only bet what you are willing to lose because Wall Street is the world's largest casino. It truly is a casino. It's legalized gambling. Trading is gambling. We're making a bet on speculation that we can buy or sell an instrument at a higher price than what we paid for it. That's gambling, guys or making a bet that a contract, if we're sellers of contracts, futures of, of options contracts, selling puts and calls, that they're going to expire worthless. We're making a bet. So, And we're trading against computers. We're really not trading against each other. There are hundreds of thousands of black box auto trading programs, otherwise known as algos, algorithms. These computer algos and the HFTs, the high frequency trading machines, represent 70% of all the intraday volume. That intraday volume are not real buyers and sellers. It's just computer algorithms buying for a nickel or a penny. That's all it is. So if we're trading against computers, we need to know where are the algos programmed to buy and sell. Computers run on a math calculation. Not a cal, but they run on math calculations. Pivot points are a math calculation based on the previous period, high, low, and close. So pivot points makes programming buy and sell algorithms very easy for these programmers. So what are pivot points? Here is a chart, a uh, five or three minute chart of the uh, uh, SPY. Uh, these lines on the chart marked uh, R1, R2, R3. This is the first resistance, second resistance, third resistance. S1 is first support. S2 is second support. S3 is third support. So pivot points are basically support and resistance lines that your charting software automatically draws for you. These are daily pivots. These are based on yesterday's or the previous day's uh, high-low close. This chart is from uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, and as you can see on this chart, this three minute spider chart, uh, this is for the for uh, this is for one day. Uh, price opened up, gapped up to the daily R2 pivot, then it fell down to the daily S1 pivot, then it spiked back up to the daily R1 pivot, and then it fell back down at 11 a.m. to the daily S2 pivot, then it rallied back at 12.30 p.m. to the uh, daily pivot, came back down, did a double bottom test on the daily S2 pivot and closed the day at the daily pivot. So the computer algorithms are the ones buying, these buying and selling at these different pivot levels. So if you know where the computer algorithms are programmed to buy and sell, it makes day trading a lot easier. And this isn't all about day trading. We get into a lot of longer term investments here too. Um, some of the advantages of pivot points are pivots are a predictive indicator of where price or support is next. So if we know where price, you know, if, if we know where the next resistance or support level is, it's predicting to us where price is going to bounce. And pivots visually show where to enter and exit. There's no guessing, there's no drawing lines. Pivots work on all instruments, whether you're trading futures contracts, options, stocks, ETFs. If you're a day trader, a weekly swing trader, uh, or longer term active trader, pivots work on all of these different levels too. There's different pivots to use for different types of traders, and I'll show that to you. <laughs> 
And the thing that I like the most thing about pivots is they're the same on all intraday and daily time frames. So a daily pivot or a weekly pivot uh, is going to be the same whether you're on a three-minute chart, a 15-minute chart, uh, a 30-minute chart. Um, it doesn't matter. They're the same on all time frames. Unlike a moving average, unlike RSI, unlike any of the other lagging indicators, they change from time frame to time frame. But the pivots aren't. They're the same. They're set in stone. Okay, so what we do is we match the pivot to your trading style. So if you're a day trader, you like day trading, we recommend using the daily pivots. If you're a swing trader, we recommend using the weekly and monthly pivots for short-term swing trades. Active investors should use just the yearly pivots. So here's a, a chart of the uh, IWM. Uh, this is from last month. The blue line on my chart is just a monthly uh, monthly pivot. We've got uh, the monthly pivot at the bottom and the monthly first level of resistance at the top. So this is a, a multi-day. You can see one, two, three, four, five. This is probably a 10 or 15 day uh, intraday chart. Uh, you can see here how price came down right to the monthly pivot, bounced off of it, consolidated for a few days, and by the end of the month, it was up to the monthly R1 pivot. So the pivot showed us exactly where to buy and where to sell on the IWM. Here's a, uh, a chart of uh, Google, and we can see Google on Monday kind of went sideways. Tuesday, it gapped down to the S1 pivot. This is the weekly S1 pivot. The green lines are the daily pivots. Uh, Gap down to the weekly S2 pivot, S1 pivot here at 7.53, and by the end of the week, it had rallied all the way up to the weekly R2 pivot at 7.79. We know at Pivotal Pivots, which is my company, that pullbacks early in the week on S1 or S2, weekly S1 or S2, is a good buying opportunity for a trade later on in the week. And I'll show you that coming up to this week, too. Here's a, a chart showing how computer algorithms move price from pivot to pivot. I talked about earlier how one of the things I've learned is how price really moves. I don't use very many moving averages or any indicators on my chart. All I'm really using is price action and pivots. And here's the uh, the IWM about uh, a year ago. I uh, came up, opened the week, went up to the weekly R1 pivot on Tuesday. The following day, it, it uh, sold off. The weekly pivot caught the, caught the sell-off, popped off the weekly pivot. On Wednesday, it gapped up. And on Thursday, it went all the way up to the weekly R2 pivot, and then closed the week on Friday at the weekly R1 pivot. So you can see how the computer algorithms move these prices from pivot point to pivot point. Here's uh, the YM futures contract. Um, this was uh, actually the end of March, early April of this year. Uh, on Tuesday, the YM came down to the weekly S1 pivot. Wednesday, it rallied up to the weekly R2 pivot, came back down to the weekly R1 pivot, bounced around, came down close to the weekly pivot, and then closed the week back at the weekly R2 pivot. So these pivots are great for short-term swing trades, day trades. Um, here's the XLF. The XLF, uh, this was also uh, last month, came down to, uh, to a weekly pivot here at $21, and by the end of the week, had rally all the way back up to the weekly R2 pivot. Here's Netflix. This was uh, about a month ago, looks like. Uh, Netflix, uh, Monday, kind of meandered down. Tuesday morning, it found support on the weekly S1 pivot, uh, rallied up. Wednesday morning, came all the way up to the weekly uh, R2 pivot, pulled back to the weekly R1 pivot, and again closed the week at the weekly R2 pivot. Or, excuse me, weekly R3 pivot, that is. Here's uh, Tesla. Uh, again, this is a five-minute intraday chart. Um, Tesla on a Monday came up to this gray line here, um, hit it. For three days, it couldn't break above this weekly R1 pivot. That was a clue that price would come down to the weekly pivot. And by uh, by Thursday, it had come back down to the weekly pivot. It went from 207.51 uh, down to uh, 106, or excuse me, to uh, 196. 
by the way, if you guys have a uh, an iPad or if you have an iPhone, right now they only have it for iOS, but this Chart Tracker is a wonderful app for uh, for iPads and for uh, for iPhones. They have all the different pivots. Okay, so weekly and monthly pivots work great for short-term swing trades, but what about longer-term trades or for your IRA investments? The biggest reversals happen at yearly pivot points. Now, a yearly pivot is based upon the previous year's calendar year from January 2nd through December 31st. It's based upon the high the low and where it closed for the year, those three pieces of data. So here is the Shanghai stock market um, in China last year and it shows how it topped out in uh, late June, early July right at the yearly R3 pivot zone and then by late August it had fallen all the way back, almost 50% it fell back to the, uh, to the yearly pivot here. Here's the Dow Jones, 1987 stock market crash. It, Dow Jones, the high for that year was at the yearly R4 pivot. And where did it crash to? It came down to the yearly S1 pivot. So the yearly pivots identified the high and the low in the 1987 stock market crash. Also in the 2008 crash. The yearly pivot was the high. Did a double top right here at the yearly P and uh, by October had fallen to the yearly S4 pivot. In fact, every market top and every market bottom since the 1929 stock market crash occurred at a yearly pivot. Here's Apple. In 2013, Apple fell from $700 down to $388, fell 45%. This is a post-split chart. But the low on Apple in 2013 was right on the yearly S1 pivot. That caught the bounce. The high last year on 2015 on Apple was right at the yearly R1 pivot. Last year in the newspapers were telling you to buy Apple at 130, it's going to 150 to 200. I was telling my clients to sell Apple or hedge your long-term investments because it's coming back down to 100 and that's exactly what Apple did uh, late summer, early fall. Apple this year came right up to its yearly pivot at 111, did a double top and fell and now it's getting pretty close to the yearly pivot for Apple is here at 86 to 81 dollars and there, when Apple failed at this yearly pivot here there's an 80% chance it's going to come down here. So those are pretty good odds. How would you like to go to Las Vegas and make a bet with 80% chance of winning? So we knew to sell Apple, to go short here, and that's what we did. Um, XLF, this is 2016, this is back in February. The XLF is the, uh, the bank's ETF. It came right down to its yearly S1 pivot and then it rallied six weeks later all the way back up to its yearly pivot. This was a great trade. Here's SPB, Spectrum Brands, one of my favorite uh, little companies. They own a lot of uh, consumer name brand stuff. It did a double bottom in January and February this year right on the yearly S1 pivot at uh, $89, $90. It's at 120 today. It's up 30%. If you have an IRA account, these are great trades for your IRA account. You don't have to worry about the taxes for many, 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 many years. And this is a great way you can grow your IRA 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50% a year if you time it right and buy these pullbacks on the yearly pivots. Uh, oil futures. I have a, a large client in New York City that had a billion dollar bet, a huge hedge fund that I, uh, I work for, um, had a huge billion dollar bet on oil. They shorted it at $99. They contacted me. They were looking to where do we get out of this bet? Where do we start scaling out of it? They obviously can't sell it in one day. You know, like we can with the click of the mouse, they had to scale out. So back in early January, when the new yearly pivots came out, I said oil has a 74% chance of bottoming on the yearly S1 pivot at 26.85. So they were scaling out as price came down and by the time price hit, 
the $26.85, $27 level, they were totally out of their short position. Oil now is back at $48. It's actually above the yearly pivot on a, uh, this is a continuous contract, but on the uh, June contract, it's actually hitting the yearly contract right now. In fact, I want to show you guys this. We're going to switch over to a live chart. Here is oil. Here is the June oil contract. And this pink line right here is the yearly pivot. I'm going to come back here and show you a year to date. We were recommending buying oil back in January and in February when price came down here to the yearly pivot. This is the June contract. The price on the June contract back in January was trading at $31 back then. The January and February contract was trading at $26 on oil. But here oil has made a perfect yearly S1 to today to the yearly pivot at $48.51. Interesting timing. Um, anyways, they're very happy with me. but. These yearly pivots work great for longer term trades. Um, oh, here's the June contract that I just showed you. I didn't know I had a slide on it. Uh, but now we're back up here at this 4851 level. We're hitting it uh, today in, uh, in post market. Uh, XLE, here's the uh, Energy Select Sector Spider. The low in 2016 was right on the yearly S1 pivot at. Uh, $61, and it rallied all the way up to actually $67 this year. This chart's back from uh, April, so it's a little old. OIH uh, found a low right on the yearly S1 pivot this year at $21, rallied 50% all the way up to $31. That's a 50% increase in your IRA. I mean, it's you know, you've got to use these yearly pivots to to buy and sell in your IRA account. These are not designed for short-term trades, the yearly pivots. They make better longer-term trades. So I like to use the yearly pivots in my long-term IRA account. Here's Costco last year. Um, Costco uh, opened up the year, spiked up to the yearly um, R1 pivot, kind of meandered around for a few months and then by late summer had fallen all the way back down to the yearly S1 pivot and then by December came all the way back up to the yearly R2 pivot. So look how these yearly pivots define the high, the low, and the high on Costco last year. These are where the major turns happen, the major rebounds. Uh, oh, here's an old chart. This brings back past memories. Look at all these lines that I used to use on my charts, all the different moving averages. It's a bunch of BS. They don't mean anything. I don't use them anymore. Anyways, the high on silver and gold back in 2011 was at the yearly R4 pivot. This is where um, um, Peter Schiff and some of these gold bugs were on TV pounding the table telling you to buy gold. It was going to $3,000. Buy silver at $50 because it's going to $150. And what happened? Six months later, it had pulled back to $27, back to its yearly pivot. Uh, here's OIH in 2014. Uh, OIH is the uh, oil services selector. Uh, came up to the yearly R1 pivot. Bounced around a little bit, then it finally broke through R1. It came up to the yearly R2 pivot, did a double top at the yearly R2. It pulled back to the yearly R1 pivot, got a little dead cat bounce, and then it fell hard to the yearly S1 pivot, got a dead cat bounce up to the yearly pivot, bounced around on the yearly pivot for, for a few weeks. Then it broke back through and came down to the yearly S2 pivot. So it went from yearly R1 to yearly S2 in 2014. Rig. This is a trade we put on uh, back uh, last month in April. We bought Rig, recommended buying Rig at $8.50. We recommended selling uh, half the position at $11, but this was a great buy at the uh, $8.50 level right on the yearly S1 pivot. That's what caught the pullback. That's what caught the ball. The Dow Jones this year, the Dow Jones Index, the DJIA, the INDU, came did a double bottom right on the yearly S1 pivot at uh, 15,600. Where are we today on the Dow? We're at 17,500. We were up at 18,200, but we pulled back some. Um, so 
This is what caught the pullback this year on the Dow was the yearly S1 pivots. If you're trading the, the, the diamonds, the DIA, same thing. The yearly S1 pivot showed you where to buy. That's the key about pivots is they show me where to buy. I don't have have to guess. I don't have to pull out a Fibonacci retracement tool. I don't have to draw silly little lines. All I have to do is add this to my chart and look at price action, look where the pivots are, and it shows me where to buy and it shows me where to start selling, scaling out, taking my profits. It doesn't get any simpler to that. And this is a free indicator available on most charting platforms. Spiders showed us to buy down here on the yearly S1 pivot uh, back in uh, February. I uh, HYG, um, uh, junk bonds, high yield bonds, the low this year bounced right off of the yearly S1 pivot. Same thing with junk. Junk bonds came right down to the yearly S1 pivot and they rallied all the way up to the yearly pivot and that's where they failed this year so far. So they made a pivot price pattern from the yearly S1 to the yearly pivot. But again, it showed you where to buy and it showed you where to sell. There's no guessing. Russell 2000 came down, it broke through the yearly S1 pivot this year, but the yearly S2 pivot caught it exactly. This showed you exactly where to buy. Then it came up to the yearly pivot here uh, back in uh, late April, early May, and now it's pulling back again. Same thing on IWM. It showed you exactly where to buy here on the yearly S2 pivot. Shows you exactly where to sell. General Electric. I'm showing you a big wide variety of stocks and indexes and ETFs and futures to show that these yearly pivots work on on, uh, on lots of different instruments, just not a few uh, a few stocks or a few ETFs. Here's General Electric. Uh, pulled back to the yearly pivot. Excuse me. And bounced right off of it. So again, it showed you where to be a buyer. Disney, great trade on Disney. Recommended buying Disney at $89 to $87, right on the yearly S1 uh, support zone. Disney came down, bounced right off of it. We, we bought there. We recommended selling, selling half of the position up here at the yearly pivot. Disney's pulled back down now to, I think, $99. But it's been a great trade. It's up 18%. We made 18% on our money from, uh, from the buy here to the, to the sell there. Here's the FXI. FXI is the uh, China ETF. Found a bottom this year, right on the yearly S1 pivot, and now it's been bouncing out of that. Uh, VRX has been in the news a lot. This is the uh, Bill Ackman stock that he got his uh, his butt kicked on. Um, I think he's in at $200 a share, and when it started falling, I said, you know, it's probably going to come down to $26, and I got a lot of ridicule on uh, on stock twits and on. Uh, on Twitter, oh, it'll never come down to $26. And right now, the low for the year is still at $26. 26 is the yearly S1 pivot. So, guys, somebody big has got to be using these yearly pivots, or we wouldn't see all these big reversals occurring on these yearly pivots. And it can't be a bunch of traders. It's got to be a bunch of big guys, a bunch of uh, big money managers, a bunch of big bankers, a bunch. Somebody's just got some very deep pockets because to turn a market around takes a lot of money and a lot of buying power. Here's AGN. We recommended AGN uh, back in uh, uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, right before they announced earnings. AG took a nosedive right down to the yearly S1 pivot, bounced off of it. I still like AGN. I bought some from my IRA down there and uh, did a nice uh, rejection right off of the yearly S2 pivot. And uh, I think AGN is probably going to come back to uh, uh, 250 maybe even 300 sometime this year. It's one of my stocks right now. Uh, Workday. <laughs> Workday took a nosedive back in February bounced right off of the yearly S2 pivot, and then it rallied 
from $50 to $80. Can you imagine buying a stock in your IRA at $50 and selling it two months later at $80? You're going to double your IRA really fast. So here's, that's exactly what Workday did. It bounced off of the yearly S2 pivot, rallied all the way back up to the yearly pivot. It still can't break over the yearly pivot. So if you think it's going to go higher, most likely it's not. So you need to take your profits there. That's the problem that most novice traders uh, experience is when a stock goes their way and they get into a winning trade, they don't know when and where to exit. And this is where the yearly pivots show you exactly not when, but where to exit. We don't know when price is going to come up there, but we do know when it does come up there that there's a 75 or 84 percent chance it's not going to go any higher than that. So take your profits there. And again, it's in your IRA. You don't have to worry about the tax consequences. Uh, Alcoa Aluminum bounced right off of its yearly S1 pivot and uh, is getting close to the yearly pivot now. Uh, Google. Google is one of our favorite stocks. I have a client that's got a couple hundred thousand shares of Google. And uh, the yearly pivot here at 690 has been strong support all year on Google. So this is the line in the sand on Google. Uh, the uh, R1 pivot has been the high. It's been bouncing between the yearly pivot and the yearly R1 pivot here, uh, which is very normal. But uh, if Google breaks below 690, then it's going to fall into the mid 550. So we know, and my client knows, that this is the line in the sand. If price breaks below that, they can either get out of their position or they can hedge it uh, with some uh, other instruments. But again, the yearly pivot showed us exactly where to buy Google. So I use four of the most popular pivot calculations. There's floor traders pivots, which uh, are based on, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a pivot calc that the floor traders developed 80 years ago. There's also Woody's pivots that I've learned that a lot of the bankers and the brokers use, Camarilla pivots, and DeMarc's pivots. Institutional traders uh, with Bloomberg terminals love using DeMarc's uh, pivots. So when I talk about pivots, I I don't use a one calculation, I use four different calculations because I never know which trading group is going to be stronger. Are the guys on the floor going to be stronger? Are the institutions going to be stronger? Are the brokers, bankers going to be stronger? So to see the whole picture, I really need to watch four sets of pivots. The Apple back in January and February came down to the yearly Camarilla L3 pivot, rallied up to the uh, yearly pivot, the yearly floor traders pivot, and that's where we failed. I showed you a chart earlier, but the initial bounce in January and February was on a yearly Camarilla pivot. Twitter, the low so far this year on Twitter is a yearly Camarilla L3 pivot here at $14. If 14 breaks, then Twitter's going to come down to uh, to uh, the floor traders yearly S1 pivot at $11.60. In the meantime, the the S1 pivot here has been resistance. Uh, USO oil bounced right off of the uh, the uh, Camarilla yearly L3 pivot uh, and has rallied back up. It's getting close up to the uh, to the yearly pivots here. Uh, here's a, a great uh, REIT that I had been watching for the, the last six months that I wanted to get in my IRA account. Uh, it was paying seven percent when I was watching it at in the uh, ten dollar and eleven dollar level. But when it dipped this past uh, winter in January and February down into the $9 level, I bought some in my IRA. At that time, it was yielding 9%. It's now rallied almost 40%. So I'm getting a 9% yield plus my cost basis is rallied 40%. I love this. It doesn't get any better. Amazon, the low on Amazon this year came down to DeMarc's yearly pivot. Remember. Institutional traders, big insurance companies, endowments, they use the Mark's yearly pivots. That's exactly where the low is on Amazon this year. And where did it rally to? It's up at $700 today. Uh, Netflix, the low on Netflix this year. This is where the institutional traders were buying it at $80. Netflix is getting back down to this $80 level. This, is, uh, this chart's 30 days old but it uh, looks like it's coming back down there. Um, 
here's Pepsi. Pepsi uh, did a, a low right on the yearly pivot this year, bounced right off of it, did a double bottom right there, and it's rallied back up uh, about 15, 20%. Okay, so if you guys want to learn more about how I, I, I do and uh, set up the uh, the pivots, because I can't tell you all in a half hour or 45 minutes, it's just impossible. I do have a half-day webinar. It's a three-and-a-half-hour recording that I did um, that I have for sale at my website at PivotalPivots.com. And in the recording, I'm going to teach you guys the difference between Floor Traders Pivots, Woody's Pivots, DeMarc's Pivots, and the Camarilla Pivots calculations. We're actually going to go over what the different calculations are, uh, and I'm also going to show you which one of these pivots to use on different time frames. Over my, my 20 years in, in, of trading, I've learned which pivots work best on which time frame. Um, I'm also going to teach you that pivots, when they come up to a price, when price, I should say, comes up to a pivot, it leaves a clue. And I'm going to teach you how to read those clues on what happens when, uh, when price comes up to a pivot. You're also going to learn why the P, the central pivot, is so important and what it means. It's, it's amazing how many people don't know um, the, the real meaning of the central P. And if you're a futures trader, you've got to know this futures trick because if not, you're going to get stopped out a lot on using pivots. So there's a, a, a trick that I teach all the futures traders in there. And I also go over how, remember, we're all different types of traders. We all don't trade and think the same way. So I'm going to show you guys how an aggressive trader should trade the pivots versus a conservative trader. Um, and I'm going to show you how, when I look at a chart, it shows me where long-term support and resistance is, and it shows me where short-term support and resistance is. So I'm going to teach you guys how to set up a pivot chart uh, with long-term and short-term pivots. So when you look at just one chart, you can get a, a, a great idea of where support is, where resistance is, depending on your trading time frame, whether you're a long-term trader or a short-term trader. If uh, IWM is down here at 120 and you're a long-term trader, you don't want to do anything. You want to set an alert for when price gets up here to the 126 level. You know, so I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, and I'm also going to teach you guys how using multiple pivots on an intraday chart will show you where the best entries and exits are when trading options. We had a great trade uh, this week where um, we bought puts yesterday when the spiders and the ES came up to the weekly R1 pivots uh, yesterday. And uh, we had a big sell-off today and those puts that we bought yesterday were up 100, 150, uh, and a couple of them were even up 200% in one day. I'm going to show you and teach you guys when trading uh, uh, options where the best entry and exits are. Um, I'm going to teach you guys how I set up my, my charts here, my intraday charts, um, every week with uh, daily support, weekly support, and monthly support resistance zone. Um, I also go through in the in the webinar, the last part of the webinar, I spend some time every weekend, I set a trading plan for the following week. And what I do in the webinar is I show you how um, I set up my trading plan. I draw lines on my chart. Here's a weekly S1. This is from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, here's the R1 pivot. Here's the monthly pivot on how I create. And before the market even opens on Monday, I know where I will want to be shorting, I know where I want to be buying. So all I have to do is either set alerts or sit back and watch and wait for price to come to me. So you're going to learn how to do that. Uh, if you go to my website uh, called PivotalPivots.com, there's a link called Webinar and, and Workshops. And I, I knocked down the price. It was $99. For you guys, I knocked it in half to $49. Uh, that price will be good for the next 30 days for this from this webinar. Uh, and the, 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 you're going to learn everything that I just talked about, uh, why the central pivot is so important and how pivots show you a trading plan, um, how you can use them for longer term and shorter term trades, etc. So uh, if you're interested in learning about how to trade pivots, um, 
$49 is cheap and uh, you're going to learn a lifetime of information. Um, I also want to talk about my company, PivotalPivots.com. Back, uh, here's a uh, Apple chart from uh, 2013 when Apple, this is uh, before the split, at $400. I was calling back in January of 2013 that Apple was going to fall to, uh, to three, uh, 390 and a lot of people uh, didn't believe me. And uh, here Apple fell down to the yearly S1 pivot in uh, April and then again in June of uh, 2013, did a double bottom right on the yearly S1 pivot and then bounced back up to the yearly pivot. Went from 390 back to 550. Uh, and because of that call on Twitter, I, I was contacted by several portfolio managers at hedge funds uh, inquiring if I had an advisory service and I didn't at the time. So that's how Pivotal Pivots got started is uh, I started an advisory service based on, uh, on my bottom call on Apple. So at Pivotal Pivots every day, I start out with the daily trading range. I tweet this to the private subscribers. I have a private uh, Twitter account that's locked. It's only for, uh, for, uh, for, for paying subscribers. And these are uh, support and resistance, buying and, and selling uh, uh, zones for the day for the ES and for the YM, NQ, Euro, oil, gold, silver, and the popular ETF. So the day starts out with me tweeting that. Then uh, at 9 a.m. to the subscribers, I tweet a 15-minute live video of the uh, support and resistance zones and some of the hot stocks that we're watching for the day that are on the, uh, the watch list. Um, so that's been one of the most popular features is the, the morning video. And then throughout the day, I'm tweeting different types of alerts to the subscribers, um, telling them, uh, showing them where resistance is. And, uh, because Every, every trader is different. I have hedge fund managers with hundreds of thousands of shares. They can't sell at the click of a mouse, so they have to come up with some way to, uh, to hedge their position when price gets too extended to the upside. When price comes down to the downside, they want to be buying. I have one hedge fund manager that bought a million shares of AGN two weeks ago at 196 on my, uh, on my call, on my recommendation when it broke through, uh, through the yearly uh, uh, when it came down to the yearly S2 pivot. So depending on what type of trader you are, you have to determine on how you're going to uh, make that trade and trade that setup. Here's a CMG alert from a few weeks ago. Uh, here's an IBM alert from, uh, from a few weeks ago. IBM did a double bottom on the yearly pivot, then it rallied up to the yearly, uh, yearly pivots. It was a good trade. Uh, and every evening, um, I have a couple of hedge funds in uh, Australia, Bangkok and South Africa that are trading in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping. So before I go to sleep at night, I trade the following day support and resistance zones for uh, for those guys and for the people that want to trade in the middle of the night. Uh, and I also tweet throughout the, the day and throughout the week popular uh, support and resistance zones for stocks like uh, Apple and Facebook and, and Google and uh, whatever is popular. And there, then there's also a live chart, chat room that we have uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day where uh, I'm tweeting charts and if you need a chart, if you're looking for to buy or sell, you're looking for what price to buy or sell at, just come into the room and uh, I'll tweet you the chart and you know exactly where to buy and sell. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. If you want to follow some of my free tweets, I have a free Twitter account at Pivotal Pivots underscore Pivots. That's my free uh, free uh, Twitter account. And I want to give a special thanks to Medved Trader. That's uh, most of the charting that I use is Medved MedvedTrader.com, and I use my interactive brokers account. Uh, the data on my interactive brokers account for the uh, data on the charts. So that's what I use for charting on PC and chart tracker is uh, the white charts and that's what I use for charting when I'm uh, uh, on the sofa or on the toilet uh, on my iPad. So chart tracker is another great program also. So guys, thank you for being with me and uh, I think we'll go through and uh, answer some questions.